Hello there. Welcome once again to Travel School. If you're new here, hi, I'm Nopur, a travel professional. And on my channel, I teach the theoretical portion of tourism relevant for the undergraduates, postgraduates, or even diploma students. So today is the second topic of our discussion, and that's history of tourism. Hold on, but pause. Yes, you heard it right. It's history. But please don't panic. I'm not going to bore you at all. So, well, jokes apart, tourism history is quite interesting and is relevant in order to understand the current scenario. So, how we go about the study is we begin with the prehistoric times, uh, specifically in the Paleolithic ages, where the travel started with the basic needs, as we can see on the slide also, that people started to travel for finding uh, new hunting grounds and move from one place to the other. Whereas, during the Neolithic times, the basis of travel was mainly exploration and along with the invention of wheel that came, then travel became much more easier. So now new trade routes which have developed, they opened and which led to the movement of people. And here, if we take one example of India, particularly along with China, it came along the Silk Route. So travel became quite more popular one. And later on this, uh, this led to the great travelers visiting India. Like if we give examples of Vasco da Gama and Christopher Columbus visiting us. In the Middle Ages, along with the trade relations, the desire to go to distant places and know about the culture, that remained to be the major reason for travel. And here comes a very interesting fact and where a special mention goes to Marco Polo, who visited India after his stay in China at Kublai Khan's palace for 20 years. So then came other travelers like Ibn Battuta and even the Portuguese and Europeans like venturing out to new lands they started traveling and went to different different parts of the world. So on the next slide we come across the early pleasure travels. So Romans were the people who were considered to be the first to take the pleasure travel and with that came the existence of the term leisure in travel. So with the Romans came the travel journals also. They When they traveled, they started writing extensively about the road connections, the major uh, names of the roads and the distance between the places that they were traveling. And obviously, as a matter of fact, that remained to be the invaluable accounts of their early travel. Also, that spas and the seaside resorts that we see today are an evolved version of the Roman times because it started in that uh, era of the early pleasure, tra pleasure travel and nowadays that has transformed and evolved in its own ways. Next came the Dark Ages. So as the Roman Empire were the first and the leading empire to give more impetus to tourism, but then along with the downfall of the Roman Empire, there came almost a sudden stop to the leisure travel. And also at that time, very few people would have traveled in this time. Whereas the Grand Tour during the Renaissance mainly was centered in Italy, where people were sent abroad for the study, study purposes. Later on, it uh, moved across and other people like Greeks, uh, the from France, people started moving around for their uh, educational purposes. So these grand tourists always respected the learning and the social refinements of the old world. And 18th century mainly can be termed as the golden era of the grand tour. The Industrial Revolution usually comprised of Cox and Kings as the first official travel company to be established. And then, as we all know about Thomas Cook, he is considered to be the pioneer of the first group tour that has happened in the year 1841, where he took a group of people from London to Lobro. And with this as the beginning, he conducted the grand circular tours of Europe. I guess everybody must have remembered that we all used to read in our uh, history books that Akbar was a very generous king who used to plant trees all along the road uh, for travelers to stop and rest. And so he made 
this place is for travelers to stay. So from there, the concept of travel has actually traveled to the current scenario where travel agencies, and we can see now these days, travel bloggers have a very great influence on the destinations on the off-beaten tracks coming into uh, limelight, the development of a particular place as a tourist destination. So this is how the tourism part has evolved and uh, through the course of history it has changed its meaning its purposes and then finally the current situation that we see is the new tourism that we find in the 21st century so with this we come to an end of this particular topic of uh, history of tourism and uh, do share your views on the class also if you would like me to do a detailed video on mass tourism or niche tourism the types of tourism do let me know in the comments so that i can make a detailed video of that if needed and you can always reach out to me via mail or calls for tourism classes so thank you guys for watching